praying through Galatians 4, specifically for Alan Barda. Verse 1. What I'm saying is that as long as, an, as long as the heir is a child, he's no different from a slave, although he owns the whole estate. Verse 2. He is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. Verse 3. So also when we were children, we were in slavery under the basic principles of this world. Verse 4, But when the time had fully come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law. 5. To redeem those under law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. Father, I pray for Alan that he would walk in the freedom and the rights of a son of God, since he's born again. And if he's not born again, then I pray that you would convict him and he would become born again. My guess is he is. Verse 6, Because your sons, God sent the spirit of his son into your hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. Verse 7, So you are no longer a slave but a son. And since you're a son, God has made you also an heir. Father, I pray for Alan that he would walk in the riches that we have in Christ, not abusing the rights and privileges of a son, but honoring his father. Father, build up the body of Christ. Verse 8, formerly, when you did not know God, you were slaves to those who by nature are not gods. Convict Alan that the body of Christ is obviously, has historically obviously been honoring the God of this world. Make it clear to him. Verse 9, but now that you know God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you're turning back to those weak and miserable principles? Do you wish to be enslaved by them all over again? Verse 10, you're observing special days and months and seasons and years. Father, convict Alan that that's what we're doing. We, 2,000 years ago, we enslaved ourselves all over again. And we've continued to do it for not taking our thoughts captive to Christ. Open his eyes. Verse 11, I fear for you that somehow I've wasted my efforts on you. Father, I pray that you would give Alan that feeling. I feel it. It's overwhelming just concerning my own family. The girls you had me homeschool. And when I think of what Jesus must feel like concerning his family, the family of believers, I can't imagine. Give Alan a taste of that. Verse 12, I plead with you, brothers, become like me, for I became like you. You have done me no wrong. Verse 13, as you know, it was because of an illness that I first preached the gospel to you. Verse 14, even though my illness was a trial to you, you did not treat me with contempt or scorn. Instead, welcomed me as if I were an angel of God as if I were Christ Jesus himself. Father, I pray that Alan would be honest concerning how the body of Christ has treated me and that he'd be appalled by it because of everything that it means. As you have me revealing in the book. Verse 15, what has happened to all your joy? I can testify that if you could have done so, you would have torn out your eyes and given them to me. Verse 16, have I now become your enemy by telling you the truth? This is exactly it. What's happened repeatedly throughout history for the past 2,000 years. Let Alan see it. It started happening way back then with Paul. They first loved Paul and then it looks like they didn't love him anymore. Right? He says in verse 16, have I become your enemy by telling you the truth? And by rejecting Paul, 
They were rejecting Christ, and that's what we've done for 2,000 years. Let Alan be honest about it. Verse 17, those people are zealous to win you over, but for no good. What they want is to alienate you from us, so that you may be zealous for them. Let's alienate you from Christ. Again, Father, give Alan eyes to see and a heart that's broken about it. Verse 18, it is fine to be zealous, provided the purpose is good, and to be so always and not just when I'm with you. Don't be hypocrites. Father, I pray that Alan would admit what outrageous hypocrites we are today. Verse 19, my dear children, for whom I am again in the pains of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. Verse 20, how I wish I could be with you now and change my tone because I'm perplexed about you. Again, let Alan be honest about it all. Verse 21, tell me, you who want to be under the law, are you not aware of what the law says? We haven't changed at all. Father, open the eyes of the born again. Verse 22, for it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the slave woman and the other by the free woman. 23, his son by the slave woman was born in the, ordina in the ordinary way, but his son by the free woman was born as a result of a promise. Verse 24, these things may be taken figuratively, for the women represent two covenants. One covenant is from Mount Sinai and bears children who are to be slaves. This is Hagar. Father, I pray that you'd open his eyes to that covenant at Mount Sinai and who actually gave it to the Israelites. It didn't come from you as Christians have historically taught. The Bible says it was given by angels and they had to be fallen angels. Truth came through Jesus Christ. Let Alan see it clearly. Verse 25, now Hagar stands for Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to the present city of Jerusalem because she is in slavery with her children. Verse 26, but the Jerusalem that is above is free and she is our mother. Father, remind Alan that the truth is what sets us free. Every time we lie to ourselves, we again enslave ourselves to Satan, the ruler and God of this world. Verse 27, for it is written, Be glad, O barren woman, who bears no children. Break forth and cry out loud, you who have no labor pains because more are the children of the, des of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband. 28. Now you brothers, like Isaac, are children of the promise. Father, let us walk as such children. 29. At that time, the son born in the ordinary way persecuted the son born by the power of the Spirit. It's the same now. Amen. Verse 30. But what does Scripture say? Get rid of the slave woman and her son, for the slave woman's son will never share in the inheritance with the free woman's son. Father, I pray that you'd give him insight to the difference between the elect and the non-elect and how it applies to the present evil age and the coming ages. Verse 31, the last verse in the chapter Therefore, brothers, we are not children of the slave woman, but of the free woman. Father, let us walk as children of the free woman, serving you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Amen.